Personality is basically a set of common traits that a person exhibits on a continued basis. If only life were that easy. There are so many descriptions of personalities and subcategories, so many variations in a person's day, let alone life. So using the five factors of personality, we can have a continuum that helps us describe generally who we are. And then we get to how we've become who we are. How I've become who I am. How do I possess these traits? Schools of thought like psychoanalysis and learning theory and neo-Freudian perspective and humanism, they help describe how we have gotten to be who we are. Conscientiousness or organization, thoroughness, reliability. This continuum is from the big five. It helps me describe my personality. As a teacher, I have lesson planning and it requires a certain amount of organization to be successful. When, it, when I teach ideas, I need to know how to coordinate and plan my lessons. As a conscientious person, I need to be thorough. I need to have follow through. Um, I really see this in my grading. I want to pursue and, and help my students see their successes and, and then also help them see their shortcomings so that they can improve upon their current successes. I also tend to take on extra work. For example, creating Google Apps for our school requires me to focus on new things that help others. Then I have to make sure I am available, dependable for these students and teachers and parents and administrators who have questions and need help. This is not me drinking and driving. Uh, I have made myself look pretty darn good so far. My conscious self is pretty satisfied. However, perhaps it is really the unconscious that drives my life at least according to Freud and, and neo-Freudians that come after him. I had a dream. Now, I may not outwardly show my nervousness. I may not even believe I am. But this dream, I'm running through the school, and I'm ill-prepared for my class. And I found myself sweating, sweating as I run in my underwear. Just below the surface, our ID, ego, superego, they're waging pitch battles throughout several stages of our life. As a child, I remember wanting what I wanted and everyone else was inconsequential. My mom loved shopping for crafts to, to food. I hated crafts. Goose's gear at a craft store. It was so boring, dull old ladies and crappy toys. Then the food shopping. Isles of death on food, I, I don't know. Following, drudging, waiting, standing going from one aisle to the next with no fun in sight, only my mom in front of me. Yeah, I'm, I'm a pretty good, cute kid. I mean, especially when I got to do things like pet a lion. Uh, but when it came to crafts, the Goose's Garrett, the dull old ladies, the crappy toys, the aisles of death, watching my mom walk in front of me, I could cry as loud as a lion. Now, this is what I wanted, and, but my superego, the messages from my parents kept telling me I had to put others' needs above my own desires. So my ego was presented with this ominous decision in what felt like a dark and lonely abyss. Do I go with what others want, or do I choose my desires? Yeah. The brother's piano lessons always netted me a few toys every several weeks. What should have been extremely agonizing and boring like the craft store and the grocery store actually turned out quite nicely as long as I behaved. That's right. My mom would teach me using the reinforcement of toys. Good behavior at my brother's lessons equals a toy. Bad behavior at my brother's lessons equals no to toy. Or even worse, my nose would go on the wall for at least 10 minutes. As an adult today, when faced with shopping with my wife, or anyone for that matter, I can become very agitated and uneasy. My stress grows and I get very fidgety. On occasion, in times like these, I regress back into my childhood temper tantrums. I don't want to go shopping. Pizza. To appease myself, and I think it alleviates some of my wife's anxiety with me, if I don't want to go shopping, I will ask for something in reward. For instance, a few weeks ago, my wife wants to go shopping. I asked for a scoozy pizza as a reward. We went. I guess regression happens at any age. 
technology, Eric Erickson developed eight stages of life. Now, I'm entering in a middle adulthood stage, a productive stage. I can decide to produce or not produce. My ambition is creating working tech policies at our school. I guess I'm engaging in those middle years. Congruence, that's what is important according to the humanistic approach. Just like the successes of geometrical drawings, my perception of myself must line up with what's real. Viewing myself as a teacher and the best at tech practices and teaching practices ever and then seeing someone else better than myself could lead to a bad image. Now, on the other hand, if I view the same situation as learning experience, I can observe and learn from those better than myself. Then goals can be set to improve myself. And goals need to be attainable, but worthy of accomplishment, worthy to be put up on a wall. So then I can plan further expectations for myself. Finally, through reaching my own, own expectations, I can achieve greater sense of self-efficacy or confidence in my exploration and creative abilities. Those close to me could describe me as accurately as a tree in the middle of a field. I'm not much, much of a mystery as far as traits, my five, five traits, but out of the psychoanalysis, the learning theory, neo-Freudian perspective, or humanism, which one would be best to say how I developed, or could I use all four to do so?